to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin this is the gospel of christ to proclaim good news unto the poor the gospel of christ spreading the soul-saving message of jesus and now ben bailey this is the gospel of christ for by grace are you saved through faith ephesians chapter 2 verse number 8. we welcome you today to our study of the subject of grace in our series of lessons on fundamentals of the Christian faith, today we're thinking about one of the premier subjects of the faith, and that is grace. God's grace is so important in salvation, and we want to consider its role and what it is and is not today. And so we're so glad that you've joined us for our study today. We hope that you'll have your Bible handy. If you don't have it, we hope you'll locate it. Have it handy as we're going to look to the Word of God together on this very important subject. As always, we're so glad that you joined us today. We want you to know that our lesson is being brought to you by individual members and congregations of the Lord's Church. The Church of Christ in your area would love for you to stop by and visit their assembly, uh, whether it be on Sunday morning or Sunday night or Wednesday night, they'd be happy to have you as a guest. If you've got a Bible question, you'd like to learn more about the church or the plan of salvation, you'll find people there who love God and who are concerned about souls. Friend, we'd also like to help you here at the Gospel of Christ. If you would like to study more about any subject, we'd be happy to study with you. If you'd like to have a copy of today's lesson, whether it be on CD for audio or DVD, the video copy, we make those available to you free of charge. Just go to our website, thegospelofchrist.com. From there, you can fill out a media request form and we'll send that to you free of charge. All of our lessons are available free of charge online. We have a good Bible study website, thegospelofchrist.com, and we hope that you'll check it out as well. And don't forget about in our fast-paced world today, the Gospel of Christ app, available from the Apple and Android store, free of charge also. Today we're thinking about the subject of grace. What is grace? What is grace's role in salvation? What does the Bible teach on this very important subject and how thankful every Christian ought to be for the grace of God? Let's begin by considering some things that, that grace is not. Grace, the grace of God, is not a license to sin. Paul said this in Romans 6 verse 1, Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not, or God forbid. Brim, when we think about God's grace, it was freely given through Jesus Christ. It's available for all men to partake of. It's that, that unmerited favor of God, but it's not something we want to take advantage of. Just because grace was given to deal with the sin problem and to help overcome sin through Jesus, that doesn't mean that we want to continue in sin because we now have grace. It's not a license to sins. It's not as though it's here and so we can do whatever we want and God's grace is just going to take care of that. No, the grace of God came at a very high price. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 8 verse 9, You know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, Though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that we, through his poverty, might be made rich. The grace of God came in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, and surely that's not something the child of God wants to take advantage of. But then would you consider another idea with me about grace, and that's this, the grace of God also, it was not given, uh, the grace of God was not given so that we could say grace alone saves us. In the Bible, it's not the idea of anything alone. We know the sacrifice and the blood of Jesus saves us, but there are other things that God teaches we must do, and, and grace alone is not going to save. Listen to Ephesians 2 8 again. By grace are you saved 
through faith. Ephesians 2, verses 8 through 10. And so it's not the idea that one thing alone saves. Matthew 7, verse 21, Jesus said, it's not everybody that looks up into heaven and says, Lord, Lord, that's going there. But he who does the will of my Father in heaven. And so we have the combination of God's grace and faith that are both essential in salvation. Faith alone doesn't save. James 2 verse 4, James says, We see that man is justified by works and not by faith alone. And so the idea of anything alone, that's not taught in Scripture. We want to do what God says and put all of God's teaching together on that. But then as we begin to think about the idea of God's grace, there's another teaching that's prevalent that's not true about grace, and it's this. There are many people who teach that a person cannot fall from grace, meaning that once you're saved, you can never be lost and you can never uh, get outside of the grace of God. Well, again, friend, that's just not taught in the Bible. In fact, that's specifically taught against. Open your Bible with me to Galatians 5 verse 4. I want you to see what Paul says about this idea in Galatians chapter 5. Look in verse number 4. And the scripture says this, right into Christians, Paul says, you have become estranged from Christ. You who attempt to be justified by law, listen to this, you have fallen from grace. And so when we think about the idea of grace, let's realize certain people in the New Testament, Paul said, because they tried to go back, they were Christians, they tried to go back and bring in teachings from the old law, Paul clearly said, you have fallen from grace. Revelation 3 verses 4 and 5, some Christians in the church in the book of Revelation were in jeopardy of having their names blotted out of the book of life. Well, friend, that again implies that we can fall from grace. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 10, we're to make sure that our election is, and calling is sure so that we don't fall. Again, the idea that we can fall. And Simon the sorcerer who obeyed the gospel, became a Christian, he was told, your money perish with you. And so as we begin to think about the idea of grace, let's do away with some false notions, but let's also realize what is it that makes grace possible? What is it that makes grace something the Christian can partake in? A well, friend, we want to begin by realizing that grace originates with the Father in the plan of redemption. John 3, 16, you, you will probably remember these beautiful words. The Bible says, God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Friend, the grace of God is possible because of the gift. And you know, in the New Testament, the word gift and grace are often used interchangeably. God's grace, God's gift is made available through Jesus and all grace originates with the Father Himself. Our, the grace of God came through the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I want you to hear the words of Romans chapter 5. Listen to verses 15 through 18. The Bible says, But the free gift is not like the offense. For if by the one man's offense many died, much more the grace of God and the gift of God by the grace of the one man Jesus Christ abounded to many. And the gift is not like that which came through the one man that sinned. For the judgment which came from one offense resulted in condemnation, but the free gift which came from many offenses resulted in justification. For if by the one man's offense death reigned through the one, much more than those who received abundance of the grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. Therefore, as through one man's sin or offense judgment came to all resulting in condemnation, even so, through one man's righteous act, the free gift came to all, resulting in justification of life. Friend, when I hear those words, I'm reminded that, that that one act of sin that Adam did opened the door. And all have gone through that door because of their own sin. But also, 
One man's righteous act, Jesus Christ, the gift of salvation, became available. What makes salvation possible? It originated with the Father, and it came through Jesus Christ. And the grace of God is revealed to us through the Holy Spirit. Titus 2, verses 11 and 12 says this, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly and righteously and godly in this present age. That grace has appeared to all men. Well, how do I know about the grace of God? It's been revealed right here in the Bible. Friend, God's grace is possible because of what God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit did to make that possible for each of us. But friend, let's also realize that faith or grace is a reality because of faith that we have in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. How does one get into the grace of God? Friend, faith is where we get into God's grace by faith. Uh, listen to a couple of passages about faith, if you would. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 says, Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. Faith is not a leap into the dark. It's based on substance, and it's based on evidence. And the Bible teaches real faith is essential to please God. Hebrews 11, 6 says it this way, Without faith, it's impossible to please God. For he that comes to him must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. It's been rightly said that, that grace is God's part in salvation. Faith is man's part. Listen again to Ephesians 2 verse 8. By grace are you saved through faith. And friend, faith the Holy Spirit, as we indicated, God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit made salvation available, but faith picks up where the Holy Spirit brought that grace to us in revealing the Word of God. Romans 10, 17 says this, Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. How would I know about the grace of God? were it not through the Bible? And how would I access that grace were it not through the Word of God? And so we want to see the key parts of, of faith and grace as they work together. You see, faith has to trust God's Word. Romans 10, 14 puts it this way. How then shall they call on Him in whom they've not believed? And how shall they believe in Him whom they've not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? I can't trust God's Word without hearing that, without being taught that, and without coming to know God and His divine will. And then it's faith that causes me to act upon God's Word. Romans 10 verse 13, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. We learn that part of that is getting up and doing what God says. Acts 22 16, Ananias was told, why are you waiting? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Friend, if I'm going to be saved and, and get into the grace of God, I've got to act upon God's Word. And friend, that's where the combination of faith and grace, that action is combined together. When faith and action are combined, then we won't have a dead faith. James 2 verse 26 puts it this way. The Bible says, For as the body without the spirit is dead, even so faith without works is dead also. What type of faith is pleasing to God? The one that combines God's grace and action together. That's the type of faith that is always pleasing to God in the Bible. And friend, please hear me well. The Bible clearly teaches that grace never excludes obedience to the will of God. Multi a multiplicity of passages in the Bible clearly teach that one must 
obey God's will. We mention uh, several of those t for our hearing today. Matthew 7, verse 21, Jesus said, It's not everybody that looks up into heaven and says, Lord, Lord, that's going there. Listen to this. But he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Hebrews 5, verses 8 and 9 says this of Jesus. Though he was a son, yet he learned obedience through the things he suffered. And having been come perfected, he became the, the, the author of eternal salvation to all who obey him. Who's going to be saved? Those who obey God. Jesus asked this question in Luke 6, 46. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do the things which I say? Is it possible for someone to say that Jesus is their Lord and then not obey Him? Jesus put it this way in John 14, 15. The Lord said, If you love me, keep my commandments. If I say I love God, I've got to do what He says. You see, Hebrews 7.25 says, Jesus is the author of eternal salvation to all who obey Him. And the Bible says in Hebrews 7 verse 25, He's able to completely justify those who do His will. And so we want to consider as well that grace never nullifies the fact that we must obey God. But friend, as we talk about the grace of God, were we to put up a face or a picture with that grace, friend, it would be the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the epitome of God's grace. Grace never came through Moses. Galatians 3, uh, James 2, 13. Listen to John 1, 17. For the law came through Moses, but now watch the parallel, but grace and truth are found in Jesus Christ. If I, where's grace found at? Who's the epitome of that? The Lord and Savior. He's the epitome of God's grace. How's that made possible? I want you to listen to this verse again about the grace of God. Such a beautiful verse. 2 Corinthians 8 verse 9, the Bible says, You know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Though He was rich, yet for your sakes He became poor, that we through His poverty, might be made rich. When you think of God's grace, think of where Jesus was. He's in the very place that we're striving to go every day. He freely left that place out of the ivory palaces. He came to a land of, of sin and sorrow and heartache. Why did He do all that? So that we, through His poverty, one day might be made rich. And so when we think of God's grace, let's realize the selflessness of that salvation. Jesus gave it all up so that we could have salvation. The way of salvation, it's not in ourselves. Ephesians 2 verse 8 again says, By grace are you saved through faith, and listen to this, and that not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. We can't say we've merited it. We can't say we've earned it. We can't say we deserve God's grace. The selflessness of it is seen in Jesus and in God's gift. You know, when I submit to the grace of God through faith, I can never say I've accomplished anything myself. Notice this verse, Luke chapter 17, verse number 10, Jesus said, And you, when you've done all those things commanded you, say, I'm an unprofitable servant. We've only done that, which is our duty to do. Haven't earned it, don't deserve it, surely can't merit it. At my best, I'm an unworthy servant. And yet, not by our accomplishment, but through God's grace, we have the opportunity to be saved. You see, our righteousness could never merit God's salvation. Isaiah 64 verse 6 says this, But we are all as an unclean, th unclean thing, and all our righteousness are as filthy rags, and we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. What's our righteousness like at its best? Filthy rags 
Why? Because we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Listen to what Paul said in Romans 10, beginning in verse number 1. Paul said, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness, and listen to this, and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. And so, friend, when we think about God's grace, let's realize it's not by our merit. We can't merit it. We can't earn it. We don't deserve it. Therefore, all glory, all praise, and all honor for the grace of God belongs to God. 1 Corinthians 10 verses, or 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 30 and 31 says this, But of Him are you in Christ Jesus, who of God has made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Now notice this, that according as it is written, he that glories, let him glory in the Lord. And so, friend, as we think today about the grace of God, how thankful we ought to be for all that God did for our salvation. When I think about how undeserved, here's what it, here's what it all boils down to. Every one of us, if we got what we deserved, we'd ultimately be lost. Psalm 103, verses 10 through 12, The Lord has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquities. What does that passage teach us? If I got what I deserved for my sin and for my iniquity, the penalty of it, I'd be lost forever. You see, the soul who sins, the Bible says, shall surely die. Ezekiel chapter 18, verse number 4. There's not a righteous man on the face of the earth who does good and does not sin. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verses 26 through 29. And yet therein comes the grace of God. Though we deserve for our sin to be lost, the Bible says this, the wages of sin is death. Now notice the grace of God. But the free gift of God is eternal life. In Christ Jesus our Lord. Friend, I need that grace. I need that undeserved favor of God. For without it, where would we be in salvation? And so, friend, we ask you today to consider with us for just a few minutes the idea of salvation. We want you to ask yourself today, have you obeyed the gospel? Have you made God's grace available in your life? by submitting to His will. Remember, it was Jesus who said, If you love me, keep my commandments. Are you a child of God? Friend, we want you to know today that the God of heaven loves you deeply. More than anything in all the world, He wants you to be saved. How do we know that? Friend, that's clearly what the Bible teaches. 1 Timothy 2 verse 4, the Bible says, listen to this, Here's what the heart of God wants. God wants all men to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. God is not slow concerning His promises, as some men count slowness, but He's long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That's what God wants, for all men to be saved. That's what we want. We want men and women to be saved, and to be right with God. Friend, if you've never obeyed the gospel, won't you consider doing that today? You may be thinking to yourself, well, I don't know if I could be saved. I've done so many things that I'm not proud of, that are not right, that I shouldn't have done. Friend, so did people in the Bible, people just like the Apostle Paul. Paul said, this is a faithful saying. Worthy of all acceptance, Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I'm chief. Friend, those are the very people God came to save, and He can save you, and He wants to save you. Do you today believe that Jesus is the Savior of the world? Here's what the Lord said. 
unless you believe that I'm He, you'll surely die in your sins. John 8, verse 24. Would you today believe that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life? No man comes to the Father except by Him. Would you be willing to submit to His will in repentance? Would you turn from sin and turn to God? Acts 3, verse 19, Peter preached this. Repent and be converted, or repent and turn, that your sins may be blotted out, that seasons of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. To get a new start, to have that refreshing start in your life, would you be willing to turn from sin? Would you confess that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God? Romans 10, verse 10, the Lord said, or Paul said, with the heart, one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Having made the good confession, would you do what the Bible says to have every sin washed away and to be clean in God's sight? Jesus put it this way. Mark 16, 16, the Lord said, He that believes and is baptized will be saved. Peter said in the very first gospel sermon, Peter preached, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. Acts 2, verse 38. And it was our Lord who said in John 3, verse 5, Unless a man is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Friend, we hope today that you'll consider seriously the grace of God, just how much God did to make salvation available, just how much God loves you and how He wants to turn your life around so that you can turn to Him and live a life that has hope, that has purpose, and that has meaning. Friend, we want you to know today that here at the Gospel of Christ, we also love you. We want you to go to heaven. Anything we can do to help you, please let us know. And friend, we pray that you'll obey the Gospel and that you'll join us next time as we study more from the Word of God. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the Churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the Gospel through TV, streaming, free media, and Internet. Our motto is truly to take the whole Gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. This is the Gospel of Christ. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On-demand downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call. 844-6-GOSPEL. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone. Is the